Well, aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gorilla Texar here with another exciting off-the-shelf episode of Hibachi Talk. <laughs> so I've got my good old buddy, the co-host, Rick's the Fun Meister Bauer. Hey, Gordo. How are you? More money than God, just for the record. So, <laughs> <laughs> has it? And we have a great guest, Bob Grigel, who is um, the president of um, Island Technologies, has an incredible Thanks. career in tech. Um, but we're going we're gonna to ruffle some feathers today. We're going to talk about the uh, energy industry and what tech has done to the energy industry and how we've um, how we've really shaken it up and so um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the set the, the mood for just a second I do a little okay. rant at the beginning so so all the, I'm always excited about people who, and I, I used to have a Prius so I bought one in 2004 <laughs> but Prius Leafs you know, I ride my bicycle. I don't burn energy. Well, I, you know, Rich, I got a picture that I was that one I went. I was at Whole Foods last week. I mean, and and people are all there, all taking care of everything and really hugging the trees and all excited and so on. But you know what? They're too damn lazy to put their shopping carts back. They yep. can't even yep. put the shopping cart back in the freaking stall. <laughs> it's ten feet away. They're killing me, right? Go <laughs> hug your Prius, right? jump on your leaf, but no, 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 I can't take, I'm too tired. I rode my bike all the way down to Kahala Mall to take my shopping cart back. Come on, people, yep. take your shopping cart back. How tough is it? It ain't that tough. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to... Um, How you doing, Gordon? Uh, yeah. you, you better now? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about the energy revolution. It's hidden, hidden in plain sight. We're going to talk about yep. cloud crushes low mileage cars. It just crushes everything as far as energy it, consumption. It sure does. It sure does. But Bob, before we do that, let's talk a little background on yourself. So where'd you go to school? You know, you've been in the tech industry a, a fair number of years. I can tell by the color of your hair. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a Southern California product, born in Santa Monica, grew up in Westwood, uh, went to UCLA for engineering school. Then I turned trader to UCLA and went across town to USC. He went to Berkeley, just for the record. <laughs> oh, I was, I was accepted to Berkeley and UCLA, and my parents said, we're not sending you to Berkeley with all those communists and the free speech movement. <laughs> <laughs> if you had gone to Berkeley, I, I guarantee you wouldn't have gone to USC. <laughs> I probably would have flunked out had I gone up there, because uh, engineering school was very difficult. I don't. I sometimes yeah. don't even know how. I, I never got offered for any of those schools, for the record. <laughs> yeah, it it was tough. Uh, you couldn't make up yeah. thermodynamics and chemistry and calculus somehow. You either knew it or you didn't know it. Yeah, it uh, came from yeah. And came then from the world. When I graduated in 1970, um, there was an aerospace crisis, so there were no jobs available. I thought I was going to go to work for Hughes or Rockwell or TRW, one of those aerospace firms, because my dad had been uh, at Douglas Aircraft as a plant manager for the B-24 bombers and wow. other things and worked directly for Donald Douglas Sr. And I was pretty sure I wanted to be in aerospace. But they had just finished laying off 20,000 engineers, and so the only two job offers I got were from Department of Water and Power in Southern California Edison. And I thought, gee, that's dead last on my list of things to do to join a utility. <laughs> I, got I thought it was going to be boring. And, but yeah. it actually, I'm so Water in LA is grateful. Big. Southern California Edison was a great company. They put me on an executive training program where I wandered around the corporation for two years. Wandered? Well, I, they put me to work for a vice president of each major division. So I worked directly for the vice president of customer service and the vice president of fuel supply. Then. Uh, environmental planning so I got to go out and climb poles with linemen in the customer service department and the fuel supply department we bought coal oil uranium gas f to power our power plants and then it eventually and I wrote environmental impact statements just when the first environmental impact wow. statement came out in 1974 when we didn't even know what it was it was only four provisions and wrote a, my first 300-page environmental impact statement on a pump storage plant in the Sierra Nevada range. 
And then I went over to procurement and eventually ended up as a contracts manager down at San Onofre, the nuclear power plant. So you know, so yeah. this is the, the, the beauty that you're going to bring to this show, that you are bringing to this show, is the fact that you know this industry from the, this energy industry from the inside out, from the grounds on it, not the political global warming standpoint. We can get into the conversation right. about that. But, I mean, you're down where it's real. Yeah, I saw it, and not to digress off our subject too much, but we were seriously looking at alternative energy sources. This is in 1970. We had geothermal plants in Salton Sea. We had uh, solar plants in the Mojave Desert. We had uh, wind power up in the Tehachapi's. And we were seriously hoping we might have 10, 15 percent of our fuels, uh, of our energy needs produced by these alternative sources. but. As you and I have talked about before, uh, it turned out there were major league problems with each of those energy yeah, sources all, that still exist in one form or another today and don't stand on their own financially. But I got a good overview of that, and then I diverged. I'll skip a couple other parts of my background, but I got off in the wonderful world of uh, computers, and I, being a contracts manager down at San Onofre, I, we were buried in documents and arbitration hearings and lawsuits and mm -hmm. 93 regulatory agencies we had to handle at San Onofre. And I became interested in the same field you were in for years and the document imaging and electronic content management. Right. How do you manage millions of pages of documents and CD&E size drawings and contracts and receipts? And that led me off into uh, the last uh, 25 years of doing electronic content management, management and in all one that form or another. So, which yeah. brings us to the subject that we, you know, of, of our conversation. Is, yeah. is, is, so, so, and and, um, and I alluded to it when I talked about the Priuses and the Leafs and so on and so on. Yeah. I mean, um, tech consumes an incredible amount of energy. It does, and it's kind of hidden. We call it hidden in plain sight. There was a fascinating article that prompted our discussion uh, in real clear energy that I read uh, regularly. And uh, they were talking all about the tremendous new demand from a variety of sources that all have to do with the tech industry and, and the demand and that it's far greater than some of the other things like uh, electric cars that we may think is bringing a tremendous demand. But actually, it's this whole silicon revolution. And while everything we do creates and demands energy, uh, Silicon Valley really has revolutionized the demand for energy. Right. And it started off kind of slow. In fact, when I was in engineering school at UCLA in the, from like 65 to 70 time frame, we actually sent the first internet message from UCLA to Stanford. Right. It was just a email. Uh, text message. I didn't even know what was going on. I have no claim to fame there, but uh, Dr. Leonard Kleinrock, that they consider the founder of the internet, that he led a group and they sent that first message. And we had no idea that what demand that was going to create. And um, what has happened is that through a whole series of things from the data centers, the energy production concern with making all of our cell phones and Networks, devices and the semiconductors and think of how much electricity we must be consuming how much do you consume now versus when you were going to berkeley energy i mean cell phones um uh, well, watches um uh it just go down the list I mean, back then networks it, we were just moving off of slide rules so and, yeah you know and slide. now well my days it was the abacus so. <laughs> so 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 think so so we sit here and we think oh i'm gonna go get a um electric car i mean it's it's a you know the, the thought process is kind of nice but when you think of what goes into constructing an electric car the batteries uh, the whole process of uh, the disposal of the batteries. batteries and then by the way where do you think the electricity comes from that powers your Prius and the coal. dirty little secret is it's probably 40 percent coal not here in Hawaii but on the mainland it's probably 40 percent coal and the rest oil and gas and uranium from nuclear power plants and it doesn't just magically come out of the sky yeah and 
also on a kind of a pound per pound, mile for mile, irrespective of whether that's coming from an electric vehicle or some other source, it's using about the same amount of energy to, to create it. Right. But the big difference is uh, the amount of energy that used to take to, say, create a refrigerator or a hair dryer, you know, the weight a refrigerator weighs a thousand times more than a hair dryer, uh, or I'm sorry, about 200 times than a hair dryer. It would be about 200 times more energy to create the refrigerator than the hair dryer. But now we fast forward to a cell phone. A cell phone takes as much energy to be created as a refrigerator, as a refrigerator. and again, it weighs a thousand times more. Uh, yeah, it weighs a thousand times less. So, so you think it's, my, my cell phone takes more energy to create than a refrigerator. And when my cell phone, when my refrigerator is done after 10, 15, 20 years, recycle it. I can recycle it. What do I do after my two, three years on my cell phone? It's just trash uh, going, I mean, in fairness, a few folks like Apple are trying to make as many parts recyclable as they can. But by and large, there has been a tremendous amount of silicon PC cell phone waste right. uh, that mm -hmm just goes into a dump on like a car that may get ground up and sent to Japan. Japan and or recycled, recycled to create another instead. car and so on. So now yeah. we're sitting in all these uh, PCs, um, terminals, yeah. um, monitors, mice. I don't care what you, <laughs> all the things are. And, and they're not recycled. No, they're not. And then now we have these new elements and the cloud is probably the biggest one that we can all relate to and of course everybody that's using Facebook and Google and Netflix, Netflix and yeah. the rest recognizes what a tremendous amount we're depending on the cloud and then what unbelievable bandwidth is being required from that and then the cloud in turn is requiring uh, these huge data centers that are the size of a Walmart or a larger mm -hmm. there's even, bigger. Some, even bigger. something bigger called a hypercenter yep. And these are billion dollar installations, each one of them. And they're 300 they, plus already. 300 plus heading f to 400 probably within the next year. Google's uh, growth has been 12 times over the last four years in the need for data centers. Apple's been putting them up fast and furious for their cloud initiatives. Apple, uh, Amazon Web Services. Amazon and their Amazon Web Services. And as you know, they're they're even selling those services to other big corporations that right. have cloud and web services on demand because they're so efficient. And they're huge energy consumers. Huge. Huge. And it's kind of a dirty little secret. Uh, folks like Apple and Google are trying to make out like they're pretty energy conscious and they're trying to use all the alternative energy sources. And I'm not criticizing them. They're trying to do the best they can. The only um, thing that's fallacious is they're not covering 100% or even close to a majority of their energy needs. It's a small percentage. It may get better. We hope it all does get better. But again, they're going to be dependent on coal-fired, gas-fired, uh, oil-fired nuclear power to really supply these data centers because they can't count on the weather. Is it going to be a sunny day? Is there going to be enough wind to fire these? So they must be connected to the electrical grid right. yeah. in order to meet some peak demand or some bad energy, uh, um, weather situation, situation that won't provide the power that they need. Cool. So let's pause there, because we're going to take okay. a break. So I told you this thing goes fast. Wow. So that is <laughs> excuse fast. me. We'll take a one minute break. We'll go pay some bills. Um, here with Bobber Gale, Rick's the fun meister. Go to the Tech Hour. He bought you talk. We'll be back in a minute. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here, and my past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen.
freedom? Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Well, welcome back. Uh, we've got Angus coming up to join us, and he's going to give us some comments about some of the recent happenings at the state legislature. Angus, hey, welcome. How are you, you doing, doing there, It's good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to see hey, you. Hey, Bob Regal. <laughs> hey, I remember you guys. 1543, you came into our village. You rigged and blundered. <laughs> the Vikings had to do something. <laughs> That's right. The Vikings had to do something. I tell you, well, great to have you on the show. Thanks, Angus. Anyway, I'm talking about a waste of energy. We're going to talk about the state legislature. I mean, with a very thematic, you know. So anyway, our state legislature in the, the privatizer this week, they said it was an epic fail. So and I did a little uh, segment a few uh, months back where I talked about, you know, the advertiser and, and, and they're endorsing candidates. I want them to come out next and say, of all the candidates we endorsed, how many were involved in that epic fail? About a lot. Anyway, the cool thing is, or maybe it's not the cool thing, is Mr. Joe Suki, the former chair, is no longer the head of the house, or the house, or the Senate, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I like his, I like his comment. We're always secretive. That's being part of the legislature. Welcome to Hawaii, the only third world country in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, I mean, you, can, you, know, you can tell I'm getting a wee uh, political lately, but you know, I'm going to be running for office, so didn't forget my, uh, when I start putting my fundraisers out there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying at the end of every segment, let your wind get free where you be. Hello. Ha. Great. great. <laughs> that's great, Angus. Thanks very much for that, that uh, little bit. Perceptions that you, you've given us for our, our legislature. How about misperceptions? Yes. And we're we're back with Bob Burgell talking talking with us about energy uh, and the changes of energy. So and because well, of, of tech, so can give because it'll just kind of summarize what we talked about in the first half, and then we've got a couple more questions. Yeah, just for you. real quickly, there were three major factors that are creating this tremendous demand in the in this. One of them was the semiconductor that started in '57 with Fairchild Semiconductor when their first uh, factories. Then the second phase was the explosive growth of the internet and today's billions of users. Yeah. And then finally, we come into this is the 10th anniversary of the iPhone, and I was at uh, MacWorld Expo in 2007 in San Francisco when the, that iPhone was introduced. Ten years and ago, man. Boy, it was. Yeah revolutionary at the time. Steve Jobs was still alive and uh, got up and introduced that. And yet, none, as revolutionary as we recognized it was at the time, we had no idea where it was going to take us and what we would be seeing here 10 years later. I'm, I'm just uh, yeah, we're, amazed. We're astounded. We're, I mean, I'm sitting here astounded with the Internet of Things. We call it the Internet of Things, right? Because you've got right. the networks and the, the physical networks, but then you've got the wireless networks, which consume 40% more energy than the wire, wired-lined networks. That's a great point, uh, Gordo. Uh, the wireless networks actually are taking way more than the data center, so they're actually, in a certain sense, a threat to the overall capacity of the networks, and, and they're growing like crazy. Wireless is yeah. growing like crazy. So just look around your home or your office and see how many people have migrated from being on an Ethernet connection to being on a wireless connection and what the power that's associated with that requires. I mean, you're sitting here and you sit, sit, I'm holding this device and I'm on, my, I'm on the Internet right now, right? I'm not using it, but I'm consuming the wireless network that I'm on. I'm consuming the network that the, <laughs> that the mobile carrier is on. All of that energy is being produced so that this phone can sit idle. Yep, yep. 
and, and not do anything at this point, except maybe an email will come in that I might get later, or an Instagram, or a Facebook, or a Pinterest, or whatever. Or a text. Or a text, whatever. And everybody's going, well, I'm not burning any energy. Oh, au contraire, one of me. You are. A lot. Well, and there's a, a term I'll throw out here and see if you guys know what it is. The data coursing through all of our wired and wireless networks now is two zettabytes. That's an incomprehensible number, okay, but two uh, you want to take a wild stab at what that? No, that you're is. the you're the guy. <laughs> you're the engineer. Okay. I'll let you do that one. Okay, <laughs> a zettabyte is a thousand terabytes or a billion gigabytes. A billion gigabytes. Yeah, so just incomprehensible the amount of data that is coursing right. around and just growing growing by leaps and bounds. Right. They say a stack of two two Zetas if worth of dollar bills could go to the sun and back one million times. So is this a, a stack? <laughs> so this is not, or, yeah, not pointed yeah. like this. No, no. This is stacked a like stack, this a, a million times to yep. the sun and back. Yep, yep. So oh, so the scale of this infrastructure that's being created and is just projected to still grow exponentially, uh, and these Walmart size centers humming with computer memory and servers, and although in fairness we've gotten tremendously more efficient than we were previously, the, one of the interesting points was if a data center we had the same efficiency as in 1987, so last yeah, back that right. time frame. It would have required five times the amount of power as the city of Manhattan. Five times to, of Manhattan. To, so, op to operate. To operate. So think of that. For just one, just get your head wrapped around that for a data center. Well, they basically, there wouldn't be any. Yeah, there data, wouldn't be any. There might be, be able to do one it. or something. But we couldn't have them proliferating as they are now. So right now they're estimating there's 300 of these major data centers. We're on the way to 400. And these hyper centers that are even larger are going in rapidly. And while we're having tremendous efficiencies and shrinkage of, of hard drives and shrinkages of the servers and so forth, Less but moving parts. Less moving parts and greater efficiencies in the uh, transistors and processors. And yet still, the growth is Well, because we keep buying these. I mean, this perfect example is yesterday, yeah. I got a, um, uh, I got a, a new phone. Yeah. And, and so that's it's the, two, the, I, yeah, the iPhone I Series two. 2, right? I and guess what? I consumed energy yesterday just like charging it. Yeah. So I'm, now yeah. I'm now I'm one of who knows of how many um, individuals who bought one of these yesterday, yeah. and so I'm sitting on this thing going, okay, well, guess what? I've just contributed to the consumption of energy. Now it's the number one smartwatch uh, selling number in the one world. Number one smartwatch. I'm, just not, I'm not that smart to figure out how to work it yet, but I'll get there. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but it just take your ten thousand steps a day. And I, I, I'm looking thing. at it right now. I'm, I'm working my way there. So, <laughs> but but again, it's, it's, it's the, the realization that all of these things that we use. The Netflix, the Facebooks, the Pinterest, you know, all of those technologies are burning energy to give you, the consumer, something that you want. So don't I don't want you sitting there thinking just because you bought a Prius or whatever, or you turn your lights off, that you're yeah. you're um, not a contributor. Every time you buy one of these things, and I'm not saying don't buy one because I do, you are burning energy. And even. Uh changes that we've noticed, say going from the 2G network now to 4G and soon to 5G, that's requiring 60 times more energy than the 2G network. Right. So we're, we're taking, you know, one step forward, two steps back. We're gaining some tremendous efficiencies and, and costs are lowering, but same time the demand is going through the roof. So net net, we're, we're increasing demand exceptionally. And it's growing faster than offshore oil platforms and any other kind of thing. We talked about the revolution, revolutions coming before World War II, basically the airplane and the auto. Right. And it took uh, the airplane 70 years to start using about 5 million barrels a day of oil. So 70 only, years for 5 million barrels a day. Yeah. Go ahead. And then only took two decades for the silicon revolution to 
have the same, same growth. Thing. So 20 years for the, for the technology industry, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley, to consume the same amount that took airlines 70 years to do. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, just amazing. And this is another interesting stat. It, the digital things, there are more complex products, of course, but they take a thousand times more energy, pound per pound, to create considering a typical product. Yeah, so pound so, per pound, so this thing takes pound per pound more energy. A thousand times. Times <laughs> more energy. Yeah, yeah. Than my refrigerator. Yep. Or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so. Well, and we're, we're making uh, 30 times more smartphones annually than refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're making smart refrigerators. So so don't let's not That's forget true. that, right? Yeah. We're making because smart refrigerators, smart toasters, the Internet of yeah, Things. Because my refrigerator there. can go and look in there and realize what product is not in the refrigerator and go ahead and make a list and get it to order. Exactly. exactly. And, and all of that takes energy. power. Well, and there's one thing on the horizon that you've probably heard of, but it hasn't really been actualized yet, and that's the self-driving cars and the smart cars that uh, Google, Apple, a whole bunch of people, are, Tesla, are all working on. Right. Right. And should those come into being, which I'm sure they will, but yep. who knows when, those could create more zettabytes of data because the smart car could okay. consume all kinds of technical information and guide and if it's going to be a guidance device as well and imagine that and also be on a wireless network the network and, and all that will consume yeah. and all that consumes so you never believe this we consumed it all speaking of energy consumption <laughs> we can we're done <laughs> we're, we're not done because we're gonna have to do an, we're gonna have to do another show but you know we okay. i've been encouraged that we need to to kind of no, get we just this scratch the we're service. just scratch the surface but i think it's interesting we got just and i'm going to drag it a little bit is that you know we're talking about energy energy and all the different forms of energy and right. the fact that the tech industry is the one of the largest if not the largest consumer of energy in the world it is and that's that's what it is okay. so in Speaking of no energy, I mean, we spent a little bit of energy. You get an autographed solo cup. Wow. 117 in the series. Bob, I don't All expect right. you to see that selling on eBay because it'll consume more energy than it costs to produce this thing. This will go in an honored place on my shelf. I'm, I'm sure it will <laughs> in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Barbara Gal, thank you so much, man. It was oh. terrific. We're going to have this. We're going to do thank this you. again. And Bob is president Thanks. of the Boys mm -hmm. Bunch. And the Boys Bunch, we raise money for Make-A-Wish. So um, we're, we're kind of influential in, in town. Fun Meister. Great. Oh, it was fun to, to have you on the again. show. Thanks, and like we say, thanks for having me. Thanks everybody for helping us get the show together. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How are you doing? doing?